everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Kishara Creates. I'm Kishara and I am your virtual resident artist and I am so excited to be back today to deliver another wonderful um, painting tutorial. If you guys are new to my channel, hi, welcome. I'm so excited to have you guys here to paint and create with me today. So let's go ahead and get started. So one of um, my very first subscribers asked me to do a bohemian style elephant and you know i just wanted to go ahead and bring that into fruition today i actually feel like that's going to be a great tutorial especially for beginners um it is my hope and joy and purpose for this channel to teach and instruct um new painters and creative people to realize that they have the potential to make beautiful pieces of art without a lot of effort or structure or anything along those lines. So today with this elephant tutorial, um, I'm not going to make it too realistic or anything like that, which is why I love the fact that she requested um, more of a bohemian type of style. So we are going to do this with a whole bunch of colors. It's going to be really fun and playful. But I'm going to do a really neutral background, so we're going to start with a gray background. And, you know, that's not too difficult, just some black and white paint. And we're going to go ahead and get that started. So, and y'all know, I got my fro out today. I had to. I just needed to feel free. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get my one-inch flat brush. I just like a flat brush, especially when it comes to do the background. Simple enough. Oh, and this is a 16 by 20 inch canvas. That is the um, typical size that I use, but you couldn't use whatever size you have. Anyway, let's go ahead and make this gray paint. All right, so I'm just going to start with some white and some black. I don't want this to be um, too dark, so I'm going to definitely use more white than black. And I'm just going to kind of put it everywhere on the canvas. I'm not going to worry too much about mixing it perfectly on my palette or anything like that because I like to have some color tone variation and all that fun stuff going on. So in some places you'll see more white and other places you'll see more black or gray and that is all good. All right. And right now I'm just putting down some paint and then we're going to go back and smooth it out and all that stuff. But I always, always say, don't forget your sides and your top and all that. And I say that mainly for my own self, because I forget that all the time. But we're not going to do that today. So let me go ahead and throw some of this gray paint on the sides and the bottom and the top. If you have um, an easel kind of like mine, um, usually, especially when I'm painting on my own, I'll go ahead and blow dry the side so they're dry and I can turn the canvas over and do the bottom and the top. I'm not doing all that today. I doubt that y'all wanna hear me blow drying anything, so I'm not gonna make y'all have to deal with that. So, step on this side. I know my throat is huge, big hair don't care, but it is what it is. All right, just making sure I got some paint on the top and the bottom and the sides. All right, I'll get some more love over here. So we're just putting down some paints for a background and then we'll start to blend it in some. I'm gonna do some more little streaks of just black. And then of course, I'm gonna go over that with some white. And y'all already need more white paint. I don't know why, but I always go through so much white paint. It is what it is. Let me go ahead and do that because I already need it. And I'm using the basic um, primary colors today. Y'all, I hate how that paint sounds, but it, what can I do about it? So I'm using yellow, um, red, and blue, but I also like to use a little bit of green also and then black and white. So I'll go ahead and add some more white paint. All right, put my palette down. I'm gonna start blending it out with what I already got on here. 
I'm just moving the paint out. And I love working with acrylics in particular because they dry so fast which is why I love doing the background first because then we can just go ahead and sketch our creator image over top of it. And don't get scared or timid when I say the word sketch because sketching is really easy, especially if you break it down in simple shapes. I mean, people just don't realize how much fun and how simplistic it really can be to make beautiful, wonderful pieces of art. But that's what I'm here for, to show y'all how to do that. So... I know I'm in the camera. I know my fro is all over the place, but I love it. Hope y'all love it too. All right. Y'all, I'm short, so I have to step on my tiptoes to see the top of the canvas, but it's all good. So I'm going to grab my water cup and wet my brush. I don't want it too saturated with water though. I don't want, you know, water dripping off with the brush, but I want enough water on my brush so that I can smooth out some of that paint. Because like I said, acrylic dries really fast. So sometimes you got to use a little bit of water to blend it out some more. And typically I go pretty fast um, with the backgrounds because like I said, acrylic paint dries really fast. So you want to keep it moving, keep it moving. Go ahead and just get the paint on there and then you can worry about smoothing it out. And you don't have to do your painting from left to right like I am. You could do it up and down, however you want to, but you just want to make sure that whatever strokes you do, you keep them consistent. You want it to look smooth. You don't want your background to look messy or unpolished. At least I don't. I like my stuff to be put together. And it just makes it look better and more professional. And it's not hard. So I might as well just go ahead and do it. So getting some more white paint. Because right here, it's not a good amount of paint to blend out. So go ahead and do that. All right. I'm going to get the main part of the canvas covered. And then I'm going to go back and add some more love to the size and the top, just to make sure that is consistent with the rest of the painting. Oh, I'm adding more white paint, of course, already. See, it's already drying on us. I'm moving too slow. We gotta speed it up. All right, give me some more water on my brush. Wipe off the excess. I'm starting up here since that's where I added all that paint. Down here it's looking pretty good, so I'm not really going to mess with it too much. But up here, smooth it on out. Get a little bit more water. And y'all, I like to paint standing up because it actually um, gives you more support for your back and for your arm and your wrist. Um, sitting down sometimes can be tiring on your arms in particular people don't realize how much effort it takes to paint but you'll feel like you got done working out when you're done especially sitting down that's why you usually see artists standing up all right and i'm just taking it off to the sides even on the sides, I'm still doing those strokes going in the same direction, so it's consistent. I'm not changing anything up. Try to make sure that you don't have any bits of the white part of the canvas showing through. And that includes the sides, too. It just looks better. Especially if you want to sell your painting or gift your painting. Um, unless you're going to put it in a frame, you want it to be consistent all the way around. I just... Grab a little bit more white paint, picking it up on the sides and on the top. I'm going to keep saying that. I have to say that even just to remind my own self. So that's what I'm doing. Let me go ahead and step on my tiptoes. <laughs> so 
I can get this done. Cover up all the little bits of the canvas. You don't want to see any of the canvas showing through your background. So I'm so excited about this tutorial, you guys. Please, 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 um, if you recreate this lovely painting, please share with me. I want to see pictures. I want to see how you guys recreate and make this your own version. Um, and like I always say, painting is about expressing your own creativity and individuality. So um, all the color choices and everything I use are more so like a reference or a guide or a recipe, however you want to look at it. So you do not have to use the same colors that I use. You can actually use that more so as a guide um, for the techniques. So if you don't want to do a gray background, you don't have to. You can do black, you can do pink, red, purple, it doesn't matter. But I wanted to do a neutral color because for this elephant, I don't want it to be um, too complex. So instead of doing a whole bunch of texture and showing you all a whole bunch of difficult technique, we're mainly just going to draw out um, the elephant and do some cool kind of tie-dye kind of colors and then add some bohemian flair to that which is going to make for a fun and I, I believe a pretty quick painting I always say that but then I start to have fun and I keep going but today I don't think I'm going to do that all right I'm gonna smooth it out one last time And see, this is what I love about acrylic. It's dry. Lovely. That's exactly what I want. We can go right ahead after this and start to sketch up our elephant. And you guys, this is going to be so simple. Literally, we're going to start with a circle and an oval and some straight lines. Everybody can do this. I guarantee it. Even on your first try, you will be able to create this. Everything that I create on this channel anybody can create with just some simple technique and good instruction which is the reason why i wanted to do this channel with real live step-by-step -step tutorials so you could really get that instruction on every single little detail on how i created it because even me as an artist i still love to learn techniques and tricks and all that from other artists so you always got to keep growing and keep expanding so all that good stuff this one little spot right here is being stubborn but there we go all right bear with me you guys i'm just getting started to youtube so i don't necessarily have the best setup but hey it works for what i'm doing right now all right, I just stepped on this side just to make sure that the sides are fully saturated. Sorry if my fro's in the way. Sorry, sorry, but you gotta love it. I love a fro. I love my fro anyway. There we go. All right, beautiful. So we are going to start sketching out our little ovals and all of that good stuff for our elephant and I'm actually going to use a round brush if you have been here before then you know a round brush is my favorite it's really good for doing smooth lines and curves and all that good stuff uh, flat brushes are great however um However, when you want, sorry, I'm mixing up a light blue, just blue and white. Flat brushes are great for when you want straight lines, but it's really hard to achieve a straight line um, with a flat edge brush. It's not impossible, but it can be difficult, especially if you're not familiar with um, painting or using different tools or anything like that. And you guys, um, if I continue looking to the side, that's because I have a reference. Anybody that knows me knows I always tend to sketch everything out first. That's just how I am. I'm a perfectionist. Even though I know I can draw it, I just do that anyway. So like I said, 
This is gonna be really free for, um, flowing. It's not gonna to be too complex or too difficult or anything like that. So um, I'm not gonna make sure that the composition is perfect because we're not gonna have trees and grass and all that going on. We're just gonna have the elephant. We're gonna make it pretty and we're gonna add some designs to it to give it a bohemian um, feel. So a lot of times with my compositions, especially when I'm doing still lives and things of that nature, um, I do tend to make sure everything's proportionate, make sure I have the same amount of inches on this side or whatever. We're not doing that today. We're just going to start with an oval. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to start it up here. And I'm doing a light blue. And once a little line coming off both sides of that. Then we're going to do what looks like almost a boxy get some more water when it comes to sketching out um anything you kind of want your paint to be like an inconsistency i hope this isn't too light if it is i'll go back over top of it yeah let me add some more blue so you guys can see i'm darken that up just a touch so i did this little circle or oval or whatever right here first then I connected these two lines and then I made this lovely kind of box shape oval perfect now we're going to just put our line of demarcation where we want the little tail to go Y'all, yeah, I'm just diluting the paint again so it's easier to sketch out with it. And I'm going to do a line right here to represent the foot and a little oval connecting to it. Well, excuse me, represent the leg and the foot. Then I'm going to do one coming out also to represent the one that's behind that. Dilute my paint some more. All right, and then of course, he needs two more legs, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Just the same thing, a line, a little oval. I want this one kind of bent a little bit, so just a little bit. Same thing, not difficult at all, voila. Oh, almost forgot where we're gonna put the trunk. So for the trunk, I'm just going to come off the front of the first little oval or whatever that we made and do a curved line or almost like an upside down candy cane or a hook there we go now and don't worry about all these extra lines and all of that because we are going to cover all of that up um, I'm going to cover it up as it go just to make it easier for you guys to see the whole composition. So the next lovely thing that we're going to do is I'm actually going to switch to a smaller brush, a more refined brush. I think that will make it easier for you guys to see um, what I'm adding to the canvas. Why do I have so many brushes and I can't ever find the one that I want? I know it's in here somewhere. There we go. Finally. All right, and I'm actually going to sketch this out with even a darker blue, which is fine because I actually I'm going to do the elephant starting off in like a purple color kind of tie dye feel blending into some blues and pinks and all that stuff. So that is the reason why I sketched it out with the light blue. But we're going to use this darker blue tone to give this elephant some more definition and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to start right up here and kind of make a straight line. Arch it. Already need some more water to dilute that some more. Arch it right here. 
and we're gonna leave that right there all right I'm going to come from right here in the middle of that first oval come down past this little line and I'm going to make a little swoosh right here and then come up and make another one as well and let me see then I'm going to come down from right here where we did that first little line you know what let me I'm gonna come out the side of the ear right here and make where the mouth is gonna go and do the outline for the tusk. Even though the tusk is gonna be white, I'm still gonna sketch it out in blue. Good thing about acrylic paint is that um, it dries really fast. Paint is a very forgiving medium. It's a lot easier than drawing because you can legitimately let it dry. Acrylic paint does not take long at all um, to dry and you can paint right over top of it. All right, so. Keep adding some love to this trunk, making it look more realistic. Thicken it up some. There we go. Let me see, let me see. All right. I gotta mix up some more of that blue. I'm just using that lighter blue we already made and making mixing a little bit of darker blue into it. You know what, I don't think I am gonna cover up the lines. I think it's pretty, fairly easy for you guys to see how I'm sketching it out. All right, all right. And I'll arch it up here some. And put another little mark for another little tusk right up there too all right so right here i'm going to start this leg this one in the front is going to be behind this one so we're going to start with this leg first and we're just going to take two lines and come around the sides of it so i just curved around where I did his belly, brought the legs down, and then I'm gonna kinda round it out at the bottom. Almost make like a U shape. Now, for this one, I'm basically gonna do the same thing. Try to make the legs um, the same width or thickness if you can if not it's okay we can always go back and touch up the background with some of that gray at the end remember to round out the bottom of the trunk i hope i'm not in the way or my fro is not in the way <laughs> hope you guys saw that but as you can see i've just brought the line down rounded it out and made another little leg that's it Diluting my paint some more so I can sketch some more with it. All right. So I'm going to bring the little line up right there. And it's probably going to go away, but hey, I'm going to bring it up for now. And we're going to do the belly and we're going to do this leg first. And this one's gonna be behind there, like we did the first one. So, just make your lovely leg. Up here, we're going to connect it. We're gonna go up towards the side to where his tail is. All right, same thing. Round out, do a little U at the bottom, and we're gonna give this love some leg too. 
this leg some love. Lord, what am I talking about? <laughs> I said this love some leg too. This leg some love also. So the same thing, just two little lines, try to make it the same width or thickness and round out your sides. Now, if some of that lighter blue is showing through or whatever, it doesn't matter because we're going to paint over this stuff anyway. So then kind of do an arch down, bring it up and connect it to where we did the sides. And then let's give the tail some love. And don't worry about if your lines are too smooth or anything like that. You just want to make sure the composition looks like an elephant because we are going to add more color and all that good stuff to it. So I'm not being too picky or too precise or anything like that. And again, this isn't going to be a super realistic piece either. It's going to be kind of whimsical, more of a bohemian type of feel, like I said, or like I mentioned. All right. Let's put an eye up here for the elephant. And I'm just closing in the eye. I'm not gonna add too much definition. I'm just making a little oval to make a, an eye. And kind of slant it because his head's going down. All right, beautiful. We have our composition for our elephant. See, that wasn't hard. It wasn't hard at all. I told you guys you could do that. All we did was start, what? A circle two lines, an oval, and some more little lines in a J. That's all we had to do. Not hard at all. So I am going to make, um, actually, you know what? I'm going to actually sketch out around with some black. And typically I usually don't do that. However, I don't want to lose all the shapes that we just did. Um, especially since we're going to go in and add a lot of color to this. So I'm going to use that same brush that we had. I am going to be a little bit more picky about the lines though. So I'm going to thin this black paint out a good bit. Black paint and white paint are really thick. They're really opaque. So you have to kind of dilute them a good amount, especially if you want nice, smooth, crisp lines. So, and as you can see, I'm twisting into the paint. I call that loading the brush. That smooths out the paint so that the paint is smooth on your brush. If your paint is smooth on your brush, then it's going to paint smoothly onto your canvas. So that is important. Oh, and I forgot to mention that all of these lovely paintings are available for purchase. Um, my website will be up and running soon. So if you guys want to purchase prints or any other merchandise um, featuring my artwork, you guys are more than welcome to do that. I will definitely let you know when all of that is situated and ready. And I might not, you know, outline the whole entire thing in black, especially the tusks, because those are going to end up being white. But I just want to make sure that you can see that it stands out. And like I said, acrylic dries really quickly. So this black is going to dry anyway and we can paint over top of it. I'm going around where the tusks are. I don't want any black there. I could because I could just paint around it but I'm not trying to do all that. And as you can see I'm not being Oh, really precise. I just want to make sure the composition does not get lost when we start to add those other colors. I'm not being too picky, but I'm being a little bit more precise than when we initially sketched it out. And I sketched it out in blue on purpose because I know I want to add purples and blue tones to this. So I knew it was going to be all good. Didn't have to worry about it. doing some lines to kind of add or to darken up where we made so we won't lose those lines when we start layering in our colors. 
Don't forget your other two legs like I almost did. And typically I use my black at the very end, but I didn't want to do a dark purple because um, I want my purple kind of bright for this. So I didn't want to outline it in a dark purple. And I typically go behind and highlight and all that with black anyway at the end. So it would be all good. Be all good. All right. Now we can do this guy. Lovely. Oh, don't forget his eye. All right, let me step back just a second. Take a look at it. Perfect. See, we have an elephant. That was not hard at all. Told you guys, you all could do that. Lovely elephant. Not being too precise or any of that. All right, I'm gonna clean off this brush. Make sure it's nice and clean. I know it always sounds like I'm beating my brushes, but really I am. Like you gotta make sure you get all the paint off your brush. Especially when it comes to mixing colors. All right, so we are going to do um, a dark purple. So I'm gonna start with some blue. It takes blue and red to make purple. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mix those up, see what we get first, and then go from there. And that is pretty, pretty dark. So I'm gonna add some white to it, start to lighten that up. There we go, I think I wanna add some more blue. Now a little bit more blue into it and a little touch of white. And see, I'm adding the white little by little. Otherwise, it's going to turn pastel. And I don't want that because I want this to be a dark purple. All right. I think I think I like that. Yeah, that's all right. Now, like I keep saying, dilute your paint so that it's not too thick. And literally outline everywhere from the inside of that black line, everywhere where you put it, the black. Go right over top of that blue. That's perfectly fine. And I'm not being too picky because we're going to blend this out. I'm just putting the paint on there. Making sure my brush is nicely saturated with the paint and my paint is nice and smooth though. So I get nice smooth lines. That way I don't have to go back and touch anything up. Or do more coats of any color. There we go. Oh, and you guys, I do want to say thank you guys so much for supporting me. Um, it really means so much to me. Um, I am right at a month in to this lovely channel and it's growing steadily and I'm so excited and appreciative. So thank you guys so much. I really do truly appreciate you guys. And you guys, send me some comments, send me some suggestions. Because as you can see, I took this suggestion from one of my subscribers. So Send me some ideas and some um, requests, some inspiration, all that good stuff. And see what I come up with and what we can create together. So still just doing the same thing. Outlining around the inside of the black with the purple. Literally going right inside of the black with the purple line. 
make sure that your paint is not too thin. You do not want water and paint dripping down your canvas. Now, and one of the main reasons why I do the background um, first is because you have to paint in layers. So when you already have a background, you don't have to do as many coats over top of it. So it actually saves you a lot of time. So I know I'm rambling, but hey, I'd rather explain everything too much than have you guys not knowing what I'm doing. That's the whole purpose of me doing this um, in real time for you guys. Just right on the sides, right up here. Up here as well. We're just going around everywhere where we have that black line and on the inside of it, filling in with that blue. I mean, excuse me. We're not using blue anymore. Filling it in with the purple. No wonder I wanted to do purple. I'm wearing purple today. I didn't even think of that. Guess I inspired my own self. All right. Still the same thing. Going around where I did the black lines with some purple. And... I'm not going to do the tusk. I'm going to do that last. And this little part, the trunk, it's okay if it's, if you cover the whole thing with the purple, that's fine. All right. Well, this guy too. I might have made it a little tail kind of thick, but hey, it is what it is. Still looks like an elephant. That's all that matters. All right, so let me dilute this brush even some more. I'm thinning out the paint, but like I always say, if you do like this and you've got water and paint dripping, then you've got too much water in your brush and you need to either add more paint or... Um, wipe off some of that excess water. All right, so in the inside, wherever we did that purple, I'm going to kind of pull the paint out into the middle. If some of the areas are close together, like the legs and the trunk, that is perfectly fine. Go ahead and fill it in, even if it covers up the whole rest of the area, because we're going to keep adding um more colors and layers to that so you see how right where we did the lines of purple how i'm kind of pushing it out this is going to give us a nice little texture and a more kind of whimsical feel when it comes to blending and mixing our colors into each other we won't have to do as many layers. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I'm not being picky. I'm just pushing the paint out. So see, now you see why I wanted to go ahead and add the black because purple is pretty dark already. And I want, I didn't want to lose any of those lines or have you guys not be able to see um, clearly what all I'm doing. So the same thing down here. I'm still gonna do that same texture and or technique, excuse me, and pull everything out to the sides of where we did that purple. Like I keep saying, if you go over any of your lines or if any of your trunks are covered up, trunks, Lord, if any of your legs are completely covered up, that's fine, because we're still gonna go back over top of those and add more um, layers of paint. See, nothing too difficult. You guys should already be proud of yourself because you guys 
drew out an elephant. I'm sure you didn't think that you could do that at first, but see, you can. All things are possible. And everyone thinks that painting is just something that only a few select people have the ability to do. But the truth is everyone that is a good painter or artist or anything like that, the only reason why they're so good is because they took an interest in it and they kept trying and practicing. Painting in pretty much any creative field is about technique. You learn some technique, you'll be surprised what you can create. Like, look, I showed you how to connect some ovals and some lines and we've got an elephant. And as we continue to progress and grow in this channel with new techniques and all of that, we will start to make some more advanced paintings. Um, lately, I've been kind of on more of a abstract, whimsical, bohemian type of vibe, but I love to do still lives and flowers. I love nature. I love being outside. So... I think soon I'm going to get back to doing some more of those and see I'm avoiding where the tusks are going to go. We're going to do those at the end and don't worry too much if you get paint over top of them or whatever because like I keep saying it dries super fast and you can just go back over top of it. I'm going to add some more right here and a little bit more right here and see that was easy enough one too precise nothing too fancy nothing too fussy i'm going to do a lighter version of that i don't know why i was holding my palette like that but hey it is what it is all right so let's add some more white paint to that purple that we used I don't want it too light. I want it more of a lavender. Make sure it's not too light. You don't want a lilac, you want a lavender. So that's what we got. And I'm just gonna kind of throw some right into those areas where we put that darker purple. And as you can see, I'm not going all the way up to where we started, I'm kind of putting it in the middle of that purple. I'm gonna throw it down first and then we're gonna do that same thing and start to um, blend it out. And right in here, I'm kinda gonna kinda do what looks like some squiggles. So for the areas where it did, where the purple kinda covered up everything, Go ahead and do that. See, not hard. Everybody can wiggle their brush. Same thing here. And like I said, this is not gonna be super realistic. We're gonna put um, some designs and all that fun stuff over top of this. We just really want this to have a nice base coat so that when we do all the detail over top of it, it pulls it all together. I'm gonna dilute my paint brush just a little bit. Make sure my paint is nice and thin and let's see add some love right here in the tail and do some little whiskers coming off of that whiskers hairs whatever you want to call them i don't know so i'm coming in with that light purple up here in the ear also and if you feel like you got if you feel like you went over that darker purple too much like I keep saying, you can go back and blend into that as well, which most likely we'll end up doing anyway. And just like we did for the legs in the areas that are kind of close together, kind of do those squiggly lines like that. See, not being picky, I'm just doing a squiggle line, just making sure some of that color's in there. Now, I'm going to dilute the brush even more and I dropped the brush. That happens every single time. All right. 
I'm just making it nice and thin so we can blend some of that. Same technique. We're just blending that color out some more. And like I keep saying, I'm not being fussy, picky, anything like that. I'm just adding layers of color, layers of paint. You don't want your paint too thin where it's running, but you don't want it too thick either to where you can't smoothly blend it out. All right, and I'm gonna kinda smooth these out some too down here, even in these tight areas. I'm gonna leave this guy alone because I kinda like that. Adding even more water to my paintbrush, even, even more. Blending, blending, blending. See, that wasn't too difficult. I think I wanna do a pink. Hmm. I think I want to do a pink and some blues, and then we're going to go back and touch up some of the other areas where they overlap. Right now we're putting down the base coats, then we'll go make it look even more refined and all that good stuff. So already, already I need more white paint again. Like I said, I go through white paint very quickly. So let's get some paint. There we go. Got it. So, just gonna add a little bit of white. You can always go back and add more if you wanna lighten it up some more, but. Add just a touch more white to it, kinda lighten that up. Some more. And to get a really bright, vivid um, pink, I like to add just a teeny tiny drop of yellow. You don't want to use too much because you don't want it to turn into a coral and you don't want it to turn into an orange. So see that gave us a nice bright pink. And right in here, same thing. Just gonna throw some of that pink down. Make sure you kind of bring it down into that purple that we laid out. There we go. Don't be too fussy because like everything else, we're gonna go back and smooth some of that out. And we're gonna do a light blue in there too. We're just gonna turn that into a nice little purple also. All right. I'm doing that same kind of squiggly line, but I'm not making it as thick. I'm kind of just bringing it straight down the middle. Thicker at the bottom, cause it's wider right here. And then kind of just bringing it up to a line. Same thing for this leg. See, nothing too difficult. I know you guys can do that. Add a little bit of pink into the tail. Some of the little hairs on the tail. And see, I'm kind of just flicking them off to the side. I'm not being picky about, or too precise or anything like that. Like I say, this piece does not need to be overly realistic. We just want it to be pretty and make sure that it looks like an elephant at the end. That's all we want. All right, let's add some of that pink into here. And the same thing that we did in the legs we're gonna do with the tusk. Hmm. 
you know what instead of blue nope i take that back i am gonna do a light blue i'm gonna do more of a sky blue I'm not gonna clean off my brush though because it's gonna blend together so add just some white and some blue I want a really light blue, so I'm gonna add a good amount of white to that. I'm gonna keep going until I like the shade or until I get the shade that I want. I want it even lighter than that. Like I keep saying, add your white gradually. You can always lighten it back up. I think I like that. And see, because I left that pink on the brush, how it turns into um, a blue, but almost a purple which is fine because it's gonna blend into that pink that we have anyway. Same thing down here, add some of that color. And see, I'm not even being super picky with that, just making sure each one of the legs has a little touch of that color. Same thing with the tail. Dilute that just a little bit. There we go. Same thing up in here. Bring it down into that pink. Don't be afraid to cover some of that up. You see right here how I'm kind of tapping into it? That's fine. And around the eye, we're going to have mostly that light blue all right i'm going to dilute the brush and excuse me saturate the brush and dilute the blue get it nice and thin i keep saying it not too thin you don't want it dripping you don't want it running down the canvas all right, let's kind of move some of those lines out or some of that blue paint out. You see how it starts to pick up some of that pink? That's what you want. That's what's going to give us that kind of tie-dye feel. Fill with the blue. Same thing down here, but I'm kind of spreading it out a little bit more. You see? I got a little bit too much water on my brush. Let me add some more paint. I'll add some more blue right in there. I'm kind of just blending it out and playing around with it. We just want the colors to start to blend and look nice together. All right. Now let's do some of that pink. Spread it out some more. Let's get this pink really thin. There we go. That's what I want. Same thing that we've been doing. See how the colors start to blend all together, all that fun stuff. And like I say, I'm not gonna put too much emphasis on um, the all the layers and everything in the elephant because we are gonna add detail and all that good stuff to it as well. So for this one, I'm going to kind of start to go off to the sides now with those colors down in the legs. Oh, add some more of that pink to the little tail. See how I started going from the side? There we go. Beautiful. Same thing for this one. 
And you can kind of play around with it. You just want to layer and play with the colors until you like how it looks. So it doesn't have to be exactly the way that I layer my paints. So. Just add in some pink here and there. You just want some of each of the colors to kind of start the show. If you feel like you get too much of one color somewhere, don't worry too much about it because you can always go back and add more of another color elsewhere. And see, I'm kind of blending some more with that pink. All right, now get, let's get our purple. We're going to start with that lighter purple again to make sure it's nice and diluted. I know I keep saying that. And see, at first when I was thinking about, contemplating about doing this, I was thinking about doing the chakra colors and all that, but I paint with a lot of bright colors, so I kind of wanted to do something that was a little more mellow or subdued or relaxing colors. So right into where that pink is, we're gonna start to blend out with some of that purple. Same thing, just kind of little quick strokes, kind of mixing the colors into each other. As if your brush gets starts to get hard to smooth out on the canvas, add more water. And see, I'm not being picky at all. I'm literally just putting down some of that purple, making sure it blends into some of the pink and some of the blue. And that's it. Same thing down here. And see, and in the legs, we're going to go around again with that darker purple to make it more defined. So really in the middle, you just want some touches of all the colors that we use. purple and see I'm still kind of just doing the same thing little squiggly lines inside the legs since those lines are so close together we just want the colors to blend nicely like I keep saying nothing's changed add some of that purple here so these colors continue to layer right there all right some of this light purple up in here in the ear and see i'm kind of just starting to play around with it and seeing how the colors are starting to blend together and i'm kind of doing scratching motions or Little squiggles, like I keep saying, like that. Just kind of wiggle your wrist and your brush. All right. So let me take a step back just for a second. Oh, wow. I really do like how those colors are blending together. Now, I'm going to have to mix up some more of this dark purple, then. It'll be all right. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of that light purple that I already have. Add some more red to it and some more blue. A little bit more blue. And add some more of that light purple into it too. There we go. Oh, I like that. I might even want to lighten it just a little bit more. Just a tad because the rest of the colors are kind of soft. I'm just diluting the paint. Nothing fancy about that. Just thinning out the paint. Twisting it around on my paint palette, thinning it out. Twisting my brush into the paint so that the paint is smooth in the brush. 
All right. And we're going to kind of go back around with that purple like we did. If you cover up any of that black, that is fine. Like I said, we're going to go back and add more definition to it. So go ahead, do that line. And right while you do it, instead of going around and um, doing that purple around all of them, go ahead and start blending it into the rest of your colors. And see, I'm not taking it all the way into the middle. I'm kind of keeping it more to the sides. And then kind of roughly blend it into the middle like that. There we go. All right, same thing. Outline it again with that purple. Don't be too fussy about if you go over any of that black. Remember, we just use that so the composition will stand out. We can always go back and touch up the black and touch up the background with any of the gray if we feel like we made any of the lines too thick or anything like that. So wipe off some of that extra paint and do those little small strips on the side to the sides of the legs and kind of swivel in the middle. There we go. All right, I need some more water on my brush. All right, right in here, we're gonna do some more. And then, same thing, blend out that purple to the sides. And kind of blend it or wiggle it into the middle. See how it kind of just nicely blends in all those colors that we layered down. That's how the layers start to come together. All right, I keep doing the same thing with these legs. Add the purple. If your paint's getting a little too thin, add some more of that purple into it, but make sure you still twist into the brush. All right. Outline it again with the purple. And do a little small strokes on the sides. And then wiggle your brush in the middle to blend all those colors together. Lovely. Oh, I'm liking that. All right. Do the same thing everywhere else, too, with that purple. So I did a little larger area right here. Matter of fact, I'm going to outline all the way up into right here with that purple. Not being too picky, like I keep saying. We're going to go back and touch up the lines and the background and all of that. Go around the side of the ear too. All right. Do your little strokes to blend some of that purple out. See, acrylic dries really fast. If that happens, saturate your brush some more, dilute that paint some more, and start to blend it out. There we go. All right. There we go, there we go. Same thing, blending, blending, blending. Y'all, if it's loud in the background, I got my family in the background. My uncle and my grandparents back there. I know they talk really loud, so I apologize if you can hear them. All right. Dabbing a little bit more water on my brush. Just 
Just keep lining it out and gonna kind of do upward strokes to kind of blend like how we did it here in the middle. Instead of wiggling it into the middle, we're gonna kind of brush the strokes up into some of that pink. See how it's changing the effect, how it's starting to blend those colors. All those layers are starting to show through. How beautiful is that? All right, same thing over here. Outline it in the purple like we did originally. There we go. And push it out to the sides. Push it out to the sides. And right here we are gonna do that kind of wiggle motion. A little bit more of that purple right here. All right. If you feel like you want some more purple, just go back to that little side wherever it is and kind of start to blend it out like we were. All right, so up here. I'm going to go ahead. And go all the way around to the trunk still kind of ignoring the trunk I mean the tusk so going around on both sides up in here also don't forget about this little guy all right and push that paint out just like we did everywhere else Start pulling that purple out. Make sure your paint is nice and diluted so it blends really well. So it doesn't cover up all those layers that you did. Down here, it's gonna be just like how we did the legs. Bring it out. And blend into the middle of it. You still get to see all those little pops of color showing through. All those layers are still showing through. And then in here, I'm going to kind of do that blending motion to dilute the brush some more. Up in here also. And see how it has mostly a nice purple tone? That is what I wanted. I'm glad I didn't get carried away with the pink. Pink and green are my favorite colors. No, I'm not AKA. I went to art school. Those are just my favorite colors. So I have a tendency to use pink and green a lot. So I'm trying not to do that. I think I wanna add some of the purple in here too. I'm just gonna do a line right there and Push that paint out. See how it starts to blend in with that blue. And neglected the tail a little bit, but since the elephant is, you know, more purple on the sides, the tail is going to be more of that darker purple, but I did want some of those other colors showing through, which is why I still kept adding colors to the tail. All right, let me step back one more time and look at it. Pretty, pretty, I like that. Might kinda, while I still have some purple on my brush, I think I'm gonna blend that in some more since I added um, some purple in the middle. All right. And again, I'm stepping back. Okay, perfect. I like that. Need some purple right here though. 
All right. I'm gonna go ahead and do the tusk. So they're white, but I don't want it to just be plain white. They're ivy, so add a little tiny touch of yellow to it. Still want it really light to where you pretty much can't tell there's any yellow in it. You just don't want it to be a plain base white, especially because I like to go back and do highlights and stuff with white. Um, I think I'm going to do all the little details um, for the elephant in white. So I don't want this to be too much of the same tone. All right. But I'm just going to cover up the lines. We're going to go back and outline them at the end when we do our definition with our black and our white. Right now, I'm just filling them in. Don't try to get it too perfect. Painting is about layers, so you might have to do more than one coat of that color. All right. Perfect. Now I'm going to get some white. Again, more white paint. How many times does that make that I grab white paint so far? Four times, maybe? It is what it is. All right, more white paint again. And I am going to use a smaller brush, so a liner brush, so kind of a thin brush. That way we can get nice smooth lines. I don't want to use my smallest liner brush though. Like this doesn't make any sense that. <laughs> I have all these brushes and everything. I can never find the one I want when I want it. There we go. Now if I was just painting on my own, I would be able to find it, but whatever. So for this, I am just going to use plain white because I'm going to go back and add some touches of color over top of it. But white is just like the black. It's thick. Actually, it's even thicker. So get that really nice and saturated before you try to use your liner brush to do anything. You want that to be nice and thin so it paints nice and smooth And keep twisting, 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 twisting into the paint. That smooths out the paint. And make sure that your brush is fully saturated with color as well. You can't get crisp lines with a dry brush. All right. So I, right in here, I hope you guys can see. I'm going to do a semicircle. See, I'm not making the lines too thin, but thin enough. Then I'm going to do another line going around it, making it thicker. And see, I already need to add more water. Already, already. There we go. Let's go ahead and just keep thinning it down so I don't have to keep stopping. All right. And this is mostly about technique, teaching you guys basically how to start adding composition and all that good stuff to your paintings. I'm going to do a smaller little semicircle right here. And 
a little circle up here at the top. And y'all, I keep looking over to the side because I have a reference picture. So I'm going to do what looks like little flower petals. And I'm not being too precise. You just want it to look pretty. It doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. And where I did each one of those, I'm going to do another little flower petal over top of it, but this one with more of a pointed tip. There we go. All right. Do a little circle in between each one of those. There we go. And I think I want to do some of those little flower petals shapes down here. Just little curved shapes. Like I said, they don't all have to be perfect. You want them kind of to be the same size, but they don't have to be perfect or anything like that. Like I said, this today is just all about making something pretty. As long as it looks good and feel free to use your own color choices too. You do not have to make yours look exactly like mine. So I'm stepping back again, mainly so I can see my reference picture. I can't remember exactly how I went today. All right. So I'm going to do U shapes, little U's. I'm leaving some space in between them though. I'm not connecting them, just U shapes. And you see how some of the background colors are starting to mix and mingle into that, the white. That is perfectly fine. I actually like that. All right, just add some more U shapes. Perfect. And I'm gonna go back with some of the thinner brushes and add some more definition as well. So down here, I'm going to do a little semicircle. And see what I mean? Well, you didn't have to be too picky about the background because we're going to go over top of it and add all this fine definition. I'm going to do the circle at the very bottom. Or excuse me, more like a upside down view or a flower petal, however you want to describe it. And some little loops or some little kind of flower petal shapes around right in here all right i'm gonna add three circles into these two on the side one at the top one on each side and one at the top one at each side and one at the top. Hmm. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of go around the ear with the white, not kinda, I am gonna go around the ear with the white. And I'm gonna come off with a little curve and then I'm gonna do one right here too and kind of round it out. You see how I did the curve and then I went back over top of it to smooth it out and make it a little bit larger. Same thing with this one. All right. And see, I'm not making this too difficult for you guys. I promise I wasn't going to do that. So right in here, pretty much where that bend is right there in the ear. I'm going to do another semicircle. And 
another one inside of that one and some more little teeny tiny loops or flower petals. All right, I think I like that the way it is. I'm not gonna add anything else right there. Up here, a little semicircle. Same thing. I covered, I colored that one in though. And I'm gonna do some more little flower petal shapes, but this time I want the top to come to a point. Another little circle. Add one of those right here. A little circle in the middle and then some more of the little flower petal shapes on the side. If you cover up any of your lines, like I keep saying, don't be too fussy because we're going to go back and touch all that up anyway. And let me step back one more time. I want to add something in the middle right here. So I'm going to do almost a diamond shape, but kind of curved. And I'm going to do right at the arch of the ear. I'm going to do a line that's kind of curving down and I'm going to try to put it in the exact same place but hey I'm going to curve it to the other side of the elephant as well add another one Make sure your paint's not too thin. Add another one, there we go. And some little flower petals or ear shapes. And little circles in between. I skipped the two circles right there because it's kind of, they're kind of close. Let me make this a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna add three circles around the top and the bottom of that too. On the sides and in the middle. Let's see, let's see. I think I'm liking that. I'm gonna add some little touches of white into the tail also. But I'm not covering up anything, I'm just adding little touches here and there. All right, now with a thinner brush, with a thinner liner brush, where are my liner brushes? I'm just gonna start laying my brushes out because this doesn't make any sense. I just had this brush. Where did it go? All right, here we go. I finally found it. All right, so I'm gonna get some black. Same story as before. Thin it out. Dilute it so it's nice and thin, nice and thin, nice and thin. Going to dilute it even more. I want to make sure it is nice and thin. And I'm not going to cover up or outline any of the whole entire thing with black, but I'm going to kind of go back around those areas and add a little touches 
just to crisp up some of those lines, but I'm not outlining the uh, entire thing. Mainly I'm covering up any little areas where maybe some of those colors got into the background where we might not have wanted them to be. But I'm kind of skipping over spots. I'm not covering up the whole thing. I don't want it to just look like a solid outline. go add some down here and up on this side see I did not cover the whole thing get some more water and some more water make sure it's nice and diluted there we go Add some in the little hairs of the tail also. We're going to give some of that love up here too. Not covering over the whole thing like I said. Just little touches here and there. Just wherever I feel like we kind of need it to stand out a little bit more. Go back over the eye again so it's nice and crisp. There we go. And I am going to outline the tuft in black, but I'm going to use an even smaller or thinner liner brush for that. But I think I want to do one more little teeny tiny coat of that ivory color that we made. Make sure your tuft comes to a point. There we go. Now, I'm using a really small liner brush. I'll do this spot right here. But right here, I definitely want to add a line. With the liner brushes, you want to be careful to make sure your paint isn't too thin. And I am going to cover the whole tusk or outline the whole tusk with the black. I'm going to add some little touches of black into all these little details that we did and touch up some of the areas in the background and then we're done. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I think this was a really fun, simple, easy painting. You guys, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you comment and send me some more ideas like this one. This one was an idea from one of my lovely subscribers, so thank you. I thought it was a great idea, so I had to bring it to life. Right 
sorry I know my fur is probably in the frame right there but I want to make sure this outline is nice and smooth All right, and some more little thin lines with the black right in here. And I'm just going to add touches of black kind of here and there, kind of outlining some of those areas that we did. I'm not covering up anything in particular, and there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing it. I'm just adding some definition with the black here and there so that the detail stands out some more see I'm not outlining the whole thing I'm not even covering the whole or any of all of them or anything like that just kind of here and there just want the definition to stand out so you can see all the detail and love and effort that we put into this lovely bohemian elephant that we created. So it's amazing what black and white will do to a painting, how it can pull it together, finish it off, make it look real crisp and precise. And I wanted the black to not be overpowering, which is why I switched to this teeny tiny liner brush. And if I was just doing this on my own, I'd probably add all kinds of stuff to the background and keep going and keep going. But I'm not going to do that to you guys today. I already kept you guys long enough. And I'm just still doing the same thing, kind of highlighting everywhere that we gave a little bit of definition to. Not covering up anything completely, not even making sure all the little black highlights are perfect or anything like that. And adding some love into them. Do some of these guys down here. This one here. And see how pretty this is and how simple it was, you guys. I told you you'd be able to do this. Everything that I do on this channel, everybody that watches this will be able to do it. It is so simple. We literally started with two ovals and some lines. It's all about breaking it down into simple shapes and then adding the definition on top of that. That's all it is. That's the only trick or anything to it. Just adding some definition here and there with the black. Just to make it stand out even more. You've got to have dark for the light to stand out and light for the dark to stand out. Just like people. There wouldn't be such thing as good people if there weren't bad people and vice versa. There we go. I'm just being very random. And I would get pink paint up there, but that's all right. Like I said, we're going to go back and touch up with the gray anyway. I always have paint all over my hands, so it is what it is. I have literally a whole drawer of clothes just for painting with. Because <laughs> I get paint on everything. Shoes, everything. Paint everywhere. Just like the last painting we did with the emerald and I did all the splatter paints. There's, I had to go get a tapestry because there was paint all over the wall. So, 
and doing the splatters was fun, but cleaning the paint off the wall was not fun. All done. Perfect. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of gray and I'm going to go back with my medium round brush when I can find it. Jeez. There we go. And use some more of the gray that we had in the background. I like to kind of test the color by doing like that. Since I had to mix up some more, make sure it matches. And it doesn't have to be too precise because as you see, we left little strokes in color variations. And wherever you feel like you need to touch up, go ahead and do that with that gray paint. That's why I said don't be too fussy about the lines. I love acrylic paint because it's very forgiving. It dries quickly. It's thick. You can paint over top of any mistakes that you make. And just going around and cleaning up the lines. And as you can see, it's not taking a lot of effort or anything like that. If your paint is kind of thick, blend it out on the sides. I'm gonna add a little water so that it blends into the background a little bit more right here. There we go. See, piece of cake, piece of pie. Not hard at all. And just add a little, little touches, cover up any little area where I feel like I need some more definition. All right, you guys, I think that's it. I think I'm happy with that. I think I'm gonna leave it alone because like I said, I would just keep on going, keep on going, and I don't want to do that to you guys. I take that back. I do want to do one teeny tiny thing. Even though these are white, I still want to add just a touch of black to it. Just a little bit. Just to give it some texture. And I'm actually going to clean that off. And go right back in with that color that I made for the tusk. And blend into that. Just kind of quickly. You don't want it to just turn gray. You just want to add some color variation in it. Especially since we've got a good amount of black everywhere else. All right. That's it. We're done. We're not going to keep going. I like it. I hope you guys liked it. If you liked painting with me today, please, please subscribe. Continue to support my channel. It just continues to give me motivation to continue to keep on going. Please share any comments with me that you have any requests or any techniques that you want to learn or any paintings that you want to see come to life. Um, if you guys are interested in purchasing any of my paintings, you can just email me. All of my information is linked below. All my um, social media, everything is linked below. So I just want to say thank you guys again for joining me today for this lovely bohemian elephant. And I will see you guys back soon. Who knows what we'll create next time. I kind of just go off a whim. So we shall see. I will see you guys next time. Bye.